Hey everybody, this is Tasha with Prep For It and my most fabulous co-host, Ms. Mouse Toes, and our special guest tonight, Gil from Gray Man Prepping and Camp Panton Family Compound. I chose to put Gray Man Prepping on here because that's his preparedness channel. So that's what I put up here. Um, so thank you for coming, Gil. We appreciate you coming on and joining us. And um, real quick, and I'll make an announcement if y'all would please remind me. Hey, SOP, or remind me towards the end of this also. Uh, I'm not going to be having a stream next week and possibly the week after. I'm having a major dental procedure done, and it may take a couple of weeks to heal on that. So, um, so we won't be on next Wednesday. Let's see. Okay, so tonight we're talking about hurricane slash typhoon, depending on which part of the world you're from, <laughs> readiness. Um, and so that's what we're talking about. Mouse Toes lives in a hurricane area. So she's she's got lots of wisdom on this. She's prepared for a hurricane after hurricane after hurricane for <laughs> years, haven't you? Yes. And you were telling us behind the scenes, and I've known this for a while, but you have a house basically up on stilts. It's a raised house, correct? Yes. Yes. My house is raised. So when the water comes flowing under it, and it does, and I got pictures, okay, if I can share them, and I've learned the secret, I was on Firefox when I needed to be on Google Chrome. So of the difference in also, if you're going to move to a hurricane zone, in the name of God, don't buy a house on a slab. Get yeah, something no. at least six or ten inches on a little crawl space. So yeah. that's sorry, Tasha. No, you're right. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. And um, I, Gil, have you ever been through a hurricane or been in in an area with hurricanes? I've been to areas where they were. I've never been there when it's happening. Because I always get my butt somewhere else. <laughs> hey, hey, Jay, Jay, how are you? Um, so on that, um, speaking of getting your butt somewhere else, mouse toes, you know your house and you know your area. What size hurricane do you know? I'm just out of here. I'm just gone. I'm, I'm pre-evacuating. I'm not going to wait for it to get real bad and then try to leave in the middle of the chaos. Right. Okay. First of all, I ain't no runner. Okay. Because I'm not a weenie. But, right, but cat three is the only one you want to stay in because once your roof starts coming off, you ain't staying and protecting nothing. Mm -hmm. Can you hear me okay without earbuds? Can people in the side hear me or do I sound robot -y? You sound fine right now. Oh, hey, groovy. Are. Okay. Mm -hmm. We're having a DSL moment then, Tasha. Okay. So we're doing good. So the issue with leaving, I left in Matthew because it was supposed to be big. And I don't know if most of y'all know, but the forecasters have been in cases of not so big hurricanes, really exaggerated with some stories, including it's going to go to North Carolina and then head back down the coast. That's when we lost total faith that no hurricanes ever done. So the issue when you leave is the storm's over in hours, right? The water, because I live on a tidal creek, the water comes in your yard, you get 14 inches on your house, it goes back out. But to get back can take you seven to 10 days. So you have to be able to have access when you're in a small town like me. They're going to be on Facebook showing the fire department moving down the one highway and across the one bridge that takes you to this island. So once they clear that, you can come. That's if they'll let you get through Charleston to get here. So if you stay, you're immediately doing cleanup, picking up the stuff in your yard that may have floated under your house. If you evacuate, anyone who stayed on this island is gonna know you're not there. Why? Because there are no cars on the high ground in your front yard. Mm. So then you open yourself to that. So yeah. Vern stayed in Matthew. I went to Greenville. It took me eight days to get back here. Eight. Wow. And in the meantime, I have no connection with Vern because he has a bleeping flip phone that he has a flip phone. 
Okay. The man was an engineer. He's brilliant. <laughs> so I had to call a friend with an iPhone and get him to come out here with a bulldozer. Or he's a heavy equipment guy, clear the trees and then found Fern in the road on his bicycle, trying to get somewhere like there's a payphone anywhere. Okay. <laughs> he was very, very handsome when he was young. And it's just what I was dealing with. So I ain't never left since then. Okay. So you do want to leave, but the issue's coming back. And I stayed with a girlfriend and I left with a whole bunch of canned goods so I could make her spaghetti and fresh bread. Mm -hmm. It's very, very expensive to evacuate. And then you need to have, once you get to where you're going, you need to fill up your vehicle because gas is not going to, may not be available to get you home. And if you're in a yeah. nine hour chock-a-block, you better have some five gallon gas in the back of your truck. So I learned in that one time, I ain't running again, but our house is rated for cat three, but it was built for that strongest foundation. There is concrete piers, rebar filled with cement. Okay. And my roof is built to Florida standards, tied down, caulked, but you can get some funky winds people. And once your roof peels back, you're going to be in six hours of a storm, three on each side that you can make the dead. So I'm not a big runner because coming home is very hard. Yeah. Yeah. It would be just like if you knew it was going to be a life or death thing and you yes. needed to go. Yeah. So cat three is our number. We'll stay for that. If it's close to a cat four, we're rolling out. Okay. Let's see here. Um, okay. So a watch versus a warning. I get this all the time for my tornado area. A watch means there could be, the, the conditions are favorable for this to happen, um, a, a tornado or a hurricane or whatever. Um, so a watch just means the conditions are favorable, favorable, keep a close eye on the weather and the, the emergency services and all of that. A warning means, yeah, it's coming. You, you might as well get ready, get prepared and get, get situated based on what they figure it's going to be, what, what category it's going to be. Right. Yes. Okay. So what do you do mouse toes to prepare your home? Jesus. You <laughs> spend the entire day before a storm getting everything under your house. Like I'm going to show you a picture of a toy box that okay. floated through our yard because remember, okay, so I married a boy from like South Carolina and Clemson and he'd never been in a hurricane and he thought, oh, it's going to be interesting. And I said, you're going to need to tie these things down under the house. They'll be fine. And I said, okay, you're going to be the one out there chasing it down. And sure <laughs> enough, he's on the back porch. He goes, why is the toy box floating? And I said, because there's water under the house, right? So he learned, it went over there to the left, it went to the right. He tied up the kayaks. One got loose because he tied it up to a bungee. Okay. So he had, he had a learning curve, right? Mm -hmm. So um, everything is getting everything into our storage room under our house. It just has doors. Okay. It's not going to keep water out. Right. I don't need an end table, my plastic chairs uh, floating down my driveway, crashing into our cars parked at our high ground. We just right. have two acres. And your high ground, people, is always by your septic tank. Okay. So right. don't go on your leach field. All right. So you have to know where to do it. Tie in every chair, our grill to the uh, deck styles. And Vern keeps up with, you get a lot of rotten wood in a salty environment. Right. So what was last year he checked and is now rotten. Mm -hmm. Those would be the styles we tie our big gas grill to and my little cannon stove with two burners. Every outdoor chair, every anything that's going to become a projectile, right? Exactly, yes. And a plastic table, you know, the little round ones people have and they put the little $5 Dollar Tree, those will fly into your window and crack it, okay, in the wind. Yeah. So when you have neighbors who are not home and they're just here periodically, after you have sweated like a whore in church under your house, seven bandanas, moving all these things. Think of what's under your house. You've got all your big five gallon spray things for fire ants. You got to get those in all your batteries to propel. I mean, there's stuff down there, people. Okay. Are you tie it to the pier under the house? You then go to your bleepity bleep neighbor's house 
and you tie their stuff up so it don't fly through the air and take out your bathroom window. Yeah. So, and every, this is the most important thing to have before hurricane comes. Ant and roach killer. Oh, okay. I'll bet. Oh. When the, tor when the hurricane comes, you don't got no air conditioning. So guess what's up? Your windows. You then have like your cute little lamps or your battery powered things. And cockroaches as big as my head, they fly. They're called palmetto bugs. They're, they're freaking cockroaches. And they'll eat, they're as big as your head and they will eat your face off. They are up against those screens. And if they can find their way in, they will. I always have a case of this. Vern just brought one in uh, July just to prepare. It is in my elevator shaft where it is not going to rust to where I can just spray them at will. You walk in the door, they fly in behind you. You have no power, right? So that's the hardest thing is prepping for it. You will literally spend 12 hours tying everything down, going over to your bleepity bleep neighbor's house who won't tie anything down. As soon as you see him go to the grocery, you swoop over and tie stuff up for your own <laughs> protection. And then you wait on the storm and it comes, then the water goes and then it's over. And then you got to pull all that stuff back out. And guess what's down there? A couple snakes. Remember fire ant piles oh. float around. They're laying where your car you so it's it's all effort there. And I don't know if y'all just heard in the storm in um Louisiana or Lousiana was they're on TV going, we didn't have much warning. You get no warning with a tornado. You get like get into your shelter now from the one guy, that weatherman in Moore, Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. They all credit was saving their life when he said, Damn it, I'm telling you viewers now, get into your storm shelter. Mm -hmm. Yep. With yep. a hurricane, we know it's coming. We have prep time. So mm -hmm. that's, sorry about my rant. Oh, no, you're good. You're good. Uh, Gil, what are some other things that you see as like far as preparedness for inside your home? Hey, Dustin, good to see you. Hey, Dustin. Well, one of the things that, um, you know, that's on the list uh, from, uh, this may be a bad word for some people, FEMA has, to, uh, people should have is a supply of plywood. If you, right. Or, or if you don't have have the metal storm shutters to cover your windows, have a supply of plywood already and use it year after year. Don't as soon as you're done with it, you don't chop it up and use it for projects. You keep it and you, you use that to put over your windows to protect your windows. Right. I think mouse toes and then pre-cut everything so they have it ready, don't you? Yeah. Yes. And, and the, ne the next thing which I could go above that is paint it, preserve it, paint both sides of the plywood so that the water and the salt water doesn't destroy it. Yeah. Yeah. They, you know, you know, anything you're going to be doing using to protect your house, make sure it's protected as well. Right. Now, the what are, the, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I thought you were done. One of the other things for, uh, when you're talking about inside your house, that's becoming more popular and I'm, I'm glad people are finally changing the name on them from solar generator to power stations is some, some sort of backup power for certain things that you, you're you going to want to have because your power lines are down. You're going to still need power for certain things. And so yeah. a solar panel and uh, one of these little power stations that you can run stuff off of, you know, you want to have that, especially if you ha use a CPAP machine. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, uh, because there's nothing worse for your spouse. And all of a sudden, you know, you're there. Hey, Bird. <laughs> I, I have essential oils for that. I really, and they work really well. RC works really well. Um, so, let's see. Um, they mentioned uh, Tiger 454 mentioned duct taping your windows so they don't shatter. That is great mm -hmm. uh, advice. Um, and then still have your plywood over it or whatever kind of shuttering material you have. But you have to pre-plan all that. You have to have all of that handy. You have to have yes. your plywood. You have to have your nails. You have to have your hammer. You have to have your duct tape. You need to have, like Gil said, your alternative power source. Because how long have you been without power after a hurricane? What, what's the longest you've gone? Hey, Christy. Ten freaking days. It sucks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. And so, and also an alternative way of cooking, if you don't 
um, if you don't have something that's not going to be affected so much by the storms, you're going to need an alternative way of cooking. You're going to yes. need food and water that you can prepare without your major power sources being available, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. And what is the thing that you talked about? And it's like a water bob, but it's something else. It's not as big as a water bob mouse toes. I got a picture of it. Do you want me to try to screen share it? Yeah, right. we can, we can try it. and screen, screen share it. Let me right try and pull it up. I got to drop this screen. <laughs> I got to do stuff. Okay. So let me, oh God, now I got to find it. It's all right here on my desktop. <laughs> it's called, I can look at it. Here it is. It is an Aquapod emergency water storage. It holds over 65 gallons. Okay. And it is made in the USA. And of course, what normally happened like back in the day when I was, you know, probably eight, nine, 10, 14, we had Hurricane Camille and Betsy. Anytime a thunderstorm was coming, my dad was in the army and he was at the port and he'd call on the party line, say, tell everybody to fill up their bathtubs. So we used to just fill up our bathtubs, okay? So now what you actually do is you get, there's also the water bob, but it is made in China. And I don't really need it to come with something permeated in it, okay, right. to make me sick in the middle of all that. So I found one made in the USA. Right. And let's see. Let's see if we can find it. And, but anyway, it's an aqua bite. It just looks like a big bladder you put in your bathtub and you're filling it with potable water, whether right. it is from your, uh, what do you call it? Your uh, well or your city water, it's there. So it's very interesting. Yeah, I don't think I could, I know what it's named, but I can't manage to find it to be on the share button because I'm not quite right. But we all know that about me. Yeah, <laughs> that's all right. It's You're okay. familiar with them, right, Gil? The bladder you put in a bathtub, <laughs> fill it, some hold 100 gallons. Yeah. Right, like a water bob, but yes. this is called Aquapod. That's the difference in the name. Yes. And then they have different sizes, right? Yes. Okay, um, another um, thing is an emergency radio. Make sure you have an emergency radio and batteries. Either before the storm and after the storm, you know, you need to have a way to keep, you know, involved in what news is taking place and and all of that like it, they'll give announcements based on in, you know regarding yes. infrastructure and things like that as Gil can probably go into great detail on all of that mm -hmm. um some other things and i've read this i don't know if you do it or not but like unplug unused appliances um and also consider if you if it looks like your area is going to flood turning your power off Is that, yeah, I mean, it, it kind it, of depends it, on your area. Is that more for like if your house is on a slab and you're. If you, if you are expecting the water level to get up into your house at all, turn it off. Right. Because you, you, you know, you don't want it to hit your, um, any yeah. of your outlets, outlets and all of a sudden you're there doing the funky chicken. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then on the food and water, don't forget your pets, any meds, food, water, all of that stuff. You need to have at least a couple of weeks worth of all of that for your home. And remember, your cooking may be limited on, on the way you can prepare food if you're not, um, if you're not, um, I mean, if you're stuck, you know, if you, your power's out. So, mm -hmm. and that that's that picture of the water bog. Yes. And that orange on the top lets you, instead of trying to do it difficult, it's just a hand pump, just like siphoning gas from your tank into your car. And that will let you fill up a um, milk jug for potable water or for you to use that to flush your toilet if you needed to. Right. We, we save all of our milk bottles, you know, your gallon milk things. We rinse them out after milk. We save them. We have a 90 gallon uh, potable water tank raised up underneath our storage unit. But before the storm, we fill up like 15 or 20 uh, milk jugs and set them in our guest bath shower. So that yeah. then we have fresh potable water as well as that 65 gallons in our master bathtub. We just have two bathrooms. We have and, a question about that. Okay. Is it reusable? I would not, only because you can't fully uh, dry it. It has like 
a funnel piece, but it's plastic. In other words, the same material it's made of, it, it's, I'm trying to think of a better word than what I want to say. It's shaped like this, okay, but it's plastic mm -hmm. and it's loose. So you have to hook that up to your faucet and you have to sit there and hold that while that water bob fills up. So that's the only way for water to get in and you can, you could not effectively dry that. Right. But if what, you would just use the water in it, remember it's from your well, so it's potable or your city water, you could refill it if you wanted to. Right. But I wouldn't and, reuse it. Right. And then also you, you like if you live out on um, property, like out in the country or something where you could have rain barrels, you could pre-fill those prior yes. to the storm. But again, things like not, not storing them on concrete where they're, you've got uh, chemicals leaching into your yes. water. Um, and then also if they're outside, are they going to float away? <laughs> you mm -hmm. know, so you have to worry about that as well. Um, and what is a one gallon milk jug weigh eight pounds? So we're walking those up. See, we're yeah. filling them up from down there. And then, so we get it all out of our potable barrel down there. Then we fill it up with well water before the storm comes. So that again is 90 gallons of right. potable safe water because it's completely sealed and it's raised up on a stand. Even if the water got to it, nothing can get in it. It's not metal. Right. Right. Yeah. Any other thoughts on that, Mr. Gill? uh hang on a second here i'm about ready to try to pull this up is it going to be a good uh, um sure. on that you can just also fill as many containers as you can like if we we're suspecting that we might be getting a power outage we don't have a water bob or a bladder or anything like that but we do fill like our large pots and yes slitters and bowls and things like that with water to have extra on hand on top of our jugs so that it's quick access and we're not open our jugs until we absolutely have to. Mm -hmm. So we do that. Okay. The, and Gil's got something he wants to share. Yes. Go. The, these, the water bricks are the neatest little thing that's come out in the last, you know, 10 years or so because yes. they, they interlock and you can stack them high. You can slide them under beds. They got the handle on. This is four of the bricks. Nice. And they interlock the, they ha come with the, uh, the um, spigot here that you can put on it. So you, and these are, I'm trying, I think these are three gallon. So you, they're, they're light enough where you can still carry it, put it up on the counter, you put the spigot in it and you get the water and you can get water there. Um, you can, uh, you know, put your regular household water in it. If you're worried about storing it, you can add a couple drops of bleach to it. Unscented, right, right, <laughs> and and that'll kill any bacteria in there. But uh, yeah, these you can, these are reusable. You can uh, store them really good. Um, some people like to get you know they'll, they'll, the the preppers that are really starting to get into it, they'll go out and add one or two of these a week. Mm. Yeah, yeah. They get, you know they get their pay, paycheck the weekly paychecks. They'll go out and add. They, they said, okay, we're going to get one or two of these till we have. A couple yes. hundred gallons of water to keep everybody, you know, nice and safe. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. The and then other, those look like you can you can reach in to clean those out, like scrub them out if you need to. Like yeah, you open forward. it up and you can see all the way in it, and you can take the the the, um, the spray nozzle off your kitchen sink and go in there and spray it all out, nice and everything else. If if you happen to get any um um just losing the word here growth inside. Right. Yeah. But yeah. You know, like I say, if you, if you, uh, you know, something like this, it's, you know, it's water out of the tap. You can just add, a, you know, like five drops of bleach to it and it's good. You know, it'll keep anything from growing in there. Yes. Now see, yeah. he really nailed it there. And yeah. that goes into what SOP was saying. Like I've got a solar powered house with battery backup. Those 10 days, we our batteries never drain because whether it's overcast, our panels, 24 in our house are recharging those batteries. But if you don't, and you need to know if what was in your chest freezer or your freezer defrosted and then the power came back on when you weren't home, 
you put a little shallow Tupperware in there with water, right? Let it freeze with no lid, drop a quarter on it. If you come back and that quarter is somewhere in the middle of that frozen or at the bottom, you lost power long enough for that Tupperware of water to melt and that coin to sink to the bottom. And while you were gone, everything refroze again. Yeah. That means that food's not good. How many yeah. days was it without that safe yeah. frozen temperature? Now, this is uh, something that you can stack with the water bricks. This is off of Amazon. Ooh. And you can actually, so you can actually put food and stuff in there. And if you notice, it's got the, uh, the lid here has a, a rubber gasket in there to make mm -hmm. it watertight. Oh, so that's you can awesome. Just, you can just store stuff in there to go with your water. Um, it, it looks like they got the little the trail mix packets there to put in there. Mm -hmm. But you could do rice. You could do like pre oatmeal, oatmeal, <laughs> whatever. Yeah, whatever you want. Yeah. And um, and how much are those, Gil? Uh, well, let me see. Let me uh, go ahead and close that out. And now we're gonna, we're gonna visit Amazon here. Okay. Do uh, not put chocolate in that. When you lose power, any chocolate, like I have a little stash where we keep <laughs> chips and chocolate on day two without power. When we went 10 days, all that chocolate melted. Those little bitty Hershey bars and those cute little Milky Ways melted. Oh, yeah. Like, mm, yeah. So just put food in that that will not melt because it's going to get hot. Oh, uh, those would be great for your pet food, too, for staying yeah. home or bugging out, really. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, problem is, this is kind of expensive, but yeah, it, is it is watertight. It's 30 bucks for a seven, three and a half gallon wow. uh, container. Um Maybe, yeah. If you get 12 of them, four dollars. It's one and done. Yeah, you buy it and you got it. Yeah. yeah, that's true too. I mean, yeah. And it looks like it's a lot more vermin proof than some other things would yes. be. So yeah. that's a and great idea. Here's something else with what Hillbilly was saying. Do your laundry the day before. Run your dishwasher or wash all your dishes, your pots, Check your refrigerator that you don't have a bunch of Tupperware in there with just a little bit of stuff. Yeah. Because water, if you're on a well or the city and it is not working, is at a premium. And the one yeah. thing we need is, I call them dog towels or yard towels. And I still have some back in the day when you got the biz, you got them in your laundry detergent, right? You buy this big one and you get a, a towel because you need to put a towel at every doorway because you're going to go out to check on things or you might have a big branch fall and you got a few seconds or minutes in that eye that you can go shove that off your pickup truck and get back in. Your shoes are going to be wet. Rain's going to be coming in with you and you want to protect your floor. If rain is coming sideways and you do not have plywood up on your windows, it is going to come through your window and you can fold those towels to absorb that water and, sh and save your wooden uh, window sills. Okay. But you'll need a buttload of towels, have your rubber boots inside. Don't ever leave rubber boots under your house or in your garage, yeah. stuff gets in them. Now you just got bit by a spider and now you've got a whole nother problem. Yeah, no in kidding. An and also speaking of dishes, have some paper plates, cups, yes. things like that, that you don't have to use your valuable water during the time that water is limited to, to do dishes on, you know, you, that way mm -hmm. all you have is whatever you're cooking it in and, and you, then you, you can uh, save some water that way. Mm -hmm. okay. I got something to talk about saving water. Uh, you want to share this. This is a one way uh, flapper check valve. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so basically what you do is on your water heater, you put it on the inlet so that the water's flowing to the water heater. And if the water gets cut off, it's not going to drain the water heater. Mm -hmm. And people go, oh, you don't have to worry about that too much. You can just oh. you know, turn. No, you, if, you, if you forget to turn off the, 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 the main water valve at the house, the inlet, you're going to lose stuff. Yep. Interesting, interesting story about... Um, how uh, unique uh, suction of water can damage stuff. When I was in, when I was working con, uh, construction, oh, 84, 
we had a job in South San Francisco on a steep, steep hill. Um, they had already done, they were doing it in three phases. They had already had one phase in, all the houses built, people living there. They were doing phase two. And a another company got the contract, because they contract different parts out, to do the tie-off off the main line to uh, put the stub out for everyone else to, you know, for the, for the other phases. Well, they had an idiot backhoe operator who wasn't listening to his spotter. He goes, I know where it is. And we're standing there watching him. He oh. goes down, takes a big bite of dirt and rips out the water main coming off the hill. Oh, oh this my was gosh. A 12 inch water line. Now when water starts moving, it don't slow down. No. And it started going down that hill. And it created such a vacuum that after about 30 seconds, we started hearing thunk, thunk, thunk coming off the hill. Those were water heaters collapsing. Oh, my God. Oh, wow. And, uh, if uh, anyone had had these, a uh, check valve on it, the check valve would have shut and would have stopped the water drying out and they wouldn't have lost their water heater. Right. But you figure your water heater, most people have a 30 or... 40 gallon water heater. That's 30 gallons of water, clean water. Yes. That'll keep you alive for you know, a person alive for 30 days or two people for 15 days. Mm -hmm. So this is, this is you know, not that expensive. They make these in PVC. I like the brass better because they can take surges and stuff a little bit better. Mm -hmm. They have, a, a, there's flapper ones. And then they also have, See if I can get this one up there. This uh, enlarge up here. Give me a second. Boom. Open and it's a spring-loaded one. Oh. So um, yeah, you have water flowing through from the one side. It pushes against the spring, gets around it, and as soon as the uh, water usage is stopped, it shuts off all automatically. And you know, every time you turn water on, it opens up automatically and everything. And it just, you know, it's a little bit more expensive. But yeah, it's and you can see in there that black part of a circle inside there. That's the gasket which shuts nice. up tight. That's excellent. Yeah. And so there, there are there, they also they also make these in PV uh, schedule forty PVC as well. So that uh, that's one way to help save the water you already have that most people don't even think about using. Yep. And it's all precious, just like Hillbilly said, do your laundry ahead of time because you're going to be sweating. Like I said, you're just going to be sweating. You'll go through six, seven bandanas a day. I can rinse those out by hand at the end of a night in the water I've been using to wash dishes, right? Or our hands, hang them out on my clothesline or hang them in the shower and you don't waste anything. You're going to go through two, three t-shirts, two, three pairs of underwear, shorts. You're going to very quickly find out, wow, because you are just drenched in sweat. Because remember, your air conditioner isn't working. I can have my ceiling fans on and my oscillating fans plugged into the outlets dedicated for our solar on the dedicated panel. But that ain't air conditioned. It got... It started out after Dorian, where we went 10 days with no power. The first day was 93 degrees. The second day was 98, and it never stopped below 98 for that whole next nine days. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, some other things, like you need to pre-plan, like where you're going to bug out to, okay? Like if you have pets, you need to know, like if you do think there's a possibility, you're going to have to evacuate then you need to make sure you you know, like if you have pets, where's a pet friendly place to go, whether it's a friend or family's house, whether it's uh, at a shelter, make sure your pets are allowed. If they're not allowed, you don't want to be wasting your time going to that shelter and then having to make it that difficult choice. Mm -hmm. um, also, if you're going to evacuate further to another city where you're going to have to stay in a hotel or something like that, you need, and you need to make sure they're pet friendly for your pets. Yes. Um, so in that that doesn't matter in any emergency situation. You need to have that, you know, for all of those situations. You need to have an emergency um, first aid kit on hand that that you can grab quickly and easily. 
uh, alternative lighting like flashlights, candles, batteries for those things, lanterns, fuel for lanterns, <laughs> yes, headlamps, yes. You blind so that, your spouse. <laughs> yeah, but it frees up your hands to do a two-handed job if you need to. Yes. Um, documents. Okay, documents. You need to have your documents ready either on a USB drive. Hey, Ark, on a USB drive or you need to have it... Um, all in one thing. I have a satchel that's, that's, you know, fire resistant. I won't say fireproof, but fire mm -hmm. resistant, water resistant. And that way I can just grab them up and go as I need. They're all in one thing with a carrying strap and everything. So if I got to go down to my torna tornado shelter, I have it. If I've got to evacuate, I can easily quickly grab that. Mm -hmm. um, but in addition, you need to make sure you have current utility bills with your address on it. Correct. So that if yes. when you are being let back in, some areas won't let you back in unless you can prove that is where you live with your license, yeah. That's right. your, your current insurance, utility, everything else. Insurance, yes, all of that. Um, and then having a laminated card with emergency phone numbers and family phone numbers because we're so used to having you know this where we don't have the numbers memorized and it's just like okay, we're gonna hit call Aunt Judy or whatever. Yes. And and then you don't know Aunt Judy's number and your phone gets dropped in the flood uh, water or, mm -hmm. or falls to the ground and shatters. And you have no way to get in touch with them to let them know you're safe or, yes. or whatever, what the situation is. So have a laminated card that you can have. And also let family and friends know you're bug out locations, your your evacuation location, where you're going to go, the route, you want to take a route that's on higher ground if you're expecting flooding. Do not drive through a flooded area. No. Have your alternative routes planned out the best you can mm -hmm. and uh, make sure that your family knows those things ahead of time and has those numbers, has a way to get in touch with those people and all of that so that, um, you know, everybody can be yeah. in the loop. When, at the federal government level, we call call that setting up a safe haven, and you make sure you have several safe havens set up, and you yeah. have people at those locations that know all the rest of the safe havens. Yes. Um, everyone, everyone, you know, thinks, "Oh, I got my, I got my smartphone here. I can got my my um my maps on here." You know, well, heck, if you don't, if there ain't no cell tower working around or no way for you to connect, how are you gonna do it? Yes, a map book is still the best thing to have mm -hmm. to uh, lay out tra uh, paths and stuff, and let everyone know uh, as soon as you can. All right, we're going to go here first, mm -hmm. and make sure they have a photocopy of the route as well. And then what I do when every time I drive back to California and back to Idaho here, every time I stop for gas at certain points along the way, I'll stop, text my wife. All right, I'm in Fernley, I'm in Winnemucca, yes. I'm in Wells, I'm at Jackpot, I'm at Twin Falls, I'm yep. at Pocatello. And that way she knows exactly where I am. And also, wait a minute, he should have texted me, where are you all right? Yeah, mm -hmm. oh, sorry, exactly. I forgot. Don't beat me, I forgot. But yeah. That's what I would do whenever I worked at the hospital and I'd have to come home and the weather was getting bad. I would let my husband know mm -hmm. throughout where I was at. So like I'd, I'd stop and I would, I would text at Sweetwater or at wherever. And that way my husband knew exactly where I was and knew where to look for me between the two locations. Like, yes, unlikely my car is going to be slid off the road and in a ditch or something in between those spots if, uh, or on the side mm -hmm. of the road. So, um, yeah, that's absolutely a good point. I want to tag, like, off, tag off a comment in the side chat here. Sure. Uh, from uh, Suburban Hillbilly. If you want to share this, please. She's smart, Gil. Yeah. This, this is. Yes. This is what generally you'll call it, see them as an earthquake tool or a utility survival tool. With this, you can shut off your water, your get natural gas, your propane. You know, this is a little simple tool to be able to shut off your, you know, your basic utilities and stuff. Um, and it's, they're not that expensive. Usually they're, you know, they're good. If you get the good ones that are good aluminum, they're, uh, they're strong enough to take, you know, take all the beating. It also has a little pry hook on there for getting the, 
if you have the um, the, wa the water meter boxes out front for those of you that are in suburbia yep. and in the streets, you can just pop the lid off there, stick the wrench in there and turn off your water. So there are, um, you know, these are uh, probably one of the easiest um, tools to get and keep. Usually what I, I do with these, I'll have one of these by the gas meter zip tied to a piece of zip tie. Cause I can just twist it, pop that zip tie off, turn off the gas meter if I need to. You know, this is part of our earthquake stuff for California. Right. Mm -hmm. Will it open water bottles? Depends how good you are. Pill bottles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, Teresa. And let me uh, key off something we were talking about is like, Tasha's in a tornado area, so she knows the weather station she can trust, right, of the lives they've saved. She gets it ready. We know a hurricane's coming, but I'm going to straight up say New York failed people in Ida. You know that there was going to be this massive amount of rain they were getting in one day that they don't get in a month. No one closed down businesses. No one gave the call. Workers need to be leaving their jobs by three in the afternoon. And then people are going, why are these idiots driving through the water? Because they're coming home from work and every road they turn on has water. Mm -hmm. You didn't see one shopping center that had high ground. What do you do? Stop your car in the road and start walking in your, your pumps from your business. Do not count on local authorities when they're stupid and Democrat to not tell you what to do. Okay. Yeah. In South Carolina, when it's coming, they will say schools will not be operating tomorrow. Even though the rains aren't starting until two in the afternoon. You know why? Children in school buses standing at corners waiting for it. Parents going to pick up their kids and businesses, even in Greenville will say, Hey, engineering company, we're all leaving at one o'clock tomorrow. Okay. No one is remaining to work overtime to prepare for the storm and the flooding coming. And that's well inland. So there is no excuse. Even if you move to a new house in South Carolina, Georgia, go to Google freaking earth, YouTube, how to search with the history bar. And you can go to that, put your personal address in and pull that history bar back. We looked at two houses that were already built and you know what kept me from buying them? The Google history bar, because they lied about how much water they got just in heavy rain. Mm. I moved to a non-velocity area. Now my water comes up. I get some little white capping, but I ain't on the beach front. Do your own research. And if you move somewhere and you know it floods, Go to Google Earth, and if you buy a house on a slab, go to the nearest psychiatric hospital and ask them why you're not smart enough to protect your family <laughs> better. You do not have to buy a house on a slab. I'm just asking for, you know, brick crawl spaces. They got them in Greenville. They got them everywhere. Use Google Earth. But when you live somewhere like New York, and you know Ida's coming, and you got to work to 8 p.m., tell your boss to pick a finger, okay? You're going home because now you've lost your car in the flood and hopefully they don't have an idiot tax, right? Where they will let you pay the deductible. Hopefully you didn't drown, but people didn't intentionally run into that walk, drive into it. They're trying to come home from work. Their authorities did not help them. And you know yeah. what? You call in sick to work that day and you get, you know what I'm saying? If you get in trouble cause you didn't go to work, yeah, you lose your car and your wife wasn't stuck out somewhere. Sometimes you draw the line. South Carolina will prepare us. We're not going to have anybody at any beach restaurant open here after this hour. And that is so that everybody gets off and they're not sightseeing. Sometimes you're responsible to save your own fat behind. Don't be an idiot. Okay. Take responsibility. I'm retired. I'm on a limited income and I'm going to take care of myself. And, can, yeah. and also, you you know, they show you the cone things are going, but go to Google Earth, download it on your laptop or whatever, and put your address in and drag it backwards. Don't buy a house without doing that. Yeah. Sorry. One of the uh, neat the web, other websites you can go to is the NOAA, Hur uh, excuse me, the NOAA Hurricane Weather Center. And, uh, yeah, you, you can click on all the different ones. You can get all the, you know, 
all the different products and tools that they have here in educational resources. You can check, this is Atlantic, this is uh, Central Pacific, this is Eastern Pacific, and you can uh, change the, the view on it. So yeah, there's uh, a lot of things you can do with this to uh, just to look to see what's going on. And this is where most of the uh, weather forecasters get their information from too. So why get at someone else's interpretation of it when you can go straight to the source? Yes. Mm -hmm. There you go. Backwards law. In an emergency, do not rely on help coming. Help your damn self is what he wanted to say, but he's too nice. Mm -hmm. Okay. And if you get your butt in a pickle, you better have a plan to get it out. And that could be rope to tie your kids to the nearest tree, right? Or something, mm -hmm. but have a plan if you insist on staying. I'm a stayer. Okay. But I got a plan. Right. Right. Like, you know what your number is, right? So, exactly. Um, and it's just like what, in a lot of these tips can apply for a lot of different emergency situations, you know. So, just because you don't live in a hurricane or typhoon area doesn't mean you can't take away something from this conversation, guys. Um, also, make sure that you have your clothing ready to go, like a backpack in case you do have to evacuate. Like sometimes they they increase without warning, don't they? And and, you know, it wasn't expected to get as large as it was. And then it does. So it's always better to have clothing, meds and all of that prepacked and ready to go and ready to uh, load into your vehicle if you need to, including protective gear like raincoats, gloves, and the proper footwear because you do not want to be out there sloshing around in water or like there could be anything underneath that water that you're stepping on, you know, so you want protective gear. You don't want to have flip flops on when you go out to get in your vehicle. That's right. Uh, yeah. head, head protection, even if you're having to head out when the wind is really high, because I saw a point, it's not what, it's not the wind is what's blowing in the wind that causes yes. damage, but actually the wind also causes damage. It can get under shutters and things like that and, mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and get under stuff. But yeah, eventually that stuff does become projectiles. And also another thing that hasn't been mentioned yet, cash, whether you stay home or you, evacuate you need cash in small bills in case there's something that you do need to purchase um you know you want to have some cash on hand in small bills um one, one of the when it comes to cash one of the best ways you do it you get those little snack size ziplocs mm -hmm. and you, you know you know you know twenty dollars worth you know ones and five what in, in those you get several of those mm -hmm. uh, one in one pocket, one in another pocket, one in a shirt pocket, one in the other shirt pocket, one stuff right. in sock, one stuff. That way you're not pulling out oh, a big oh, one or yep. ones or fives. Or... Well, gee, all, all I got is hundreds. What do I do? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. And then you have to talk. Oh, go ahead, Mouse. Sorry. Your stores will reopen. Exactly, Gil. Your stores will reopen. Remember, if they didn't flood. Are there glass break? They've still got chips and things like that, but it's going to have a sign on the front cash. And mine is all ones and fives. I'm not having yeah. anything bigger than that. Yeah, because not that I need to go there, but if I did, you know. Yeah. Because if the like electric's out, if the electric's out, they're not going to be able to take cards, people. Right. <laughs> and You're not going to be able to use the ATM. Coin, one of those old, old, old fashioned co plastic coin, once you squeeze it, it opens up. You got, you know, a couple mm -hmm. dollars worth of coins in there, pennies, uh, dimes, nickels, you know, quarters and stuff. So, because sometimes, you know, that they may not, they be, there's a coin shortage. Yes. I, I could go on about that. But, yeah, don't uh, get me started. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so some places are going to need, you know, exact change to be able to sell stuff after a while because people are going to come in with their 20s yes. and they're going to strip the store out of, of all the change and stuff. So. Yeah, there that's what I was saying, head head um, protection. Yeah. Yep. Teresa has a plan. See, I mean, everybody yep. can have a plan. There's exactly. no reason to not know where you live. Yeah. And then also have stuff to fix temporary holes and stuff in your roof. Like if it blows up a shingle and, and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Make sure you have tarps and all of the stuff necessary to do temporary repair until you can get 
uh, somebody in to do it correctly for you whenever services mm -hmm. are, are back in power. Now, on prepping your vehicle, is there anything else on prepping your house um, while I'm thinking about it? Well, window protection. And then let's say that one of your boards, uh, we have something different. It's like a greenhouse roof panel. So it lets more light in. They're much lighter because we have to go up a ladder to put them on. I don't know if you people know this. There aren't people who you can ask to come out and board up your house when you're yeah. raised in the air. You got to do it yourself. And everybody here, we're all 100 freaking years old. Have some, we keep everything inside, rolls of duct tape that if we need, say that a window breaks, say one falls out and the window breaks or a heron runs into it or a big branch, that I've got huge pieces of very thick black plastic in our elevator shaft rolled up so that we can get that. It's not going to be pretty on the inside of our window to keep what? That'd be the cockroaches as big as my face out. But more than that, <laughs> more rain or love bugs or flies or mosquitoes. And just that you don't need, you know, because you can still have rain well after or two days after a storm. Right. And again, just like towels and like Hillbilly said, also not walking through your house with wet shoes. If you got something dry to stand on or take them off and put on house shoes, you won't have trip hazards. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And Ginger Ninja, great, great point. And CR said tape. Great tape. tape. Duct tape is awesome for a yes. lot of stuff. Temporary fixes for mm -hmm. things. Okay, so prepping your car. Um, full tank. You don't want to be trying to yes. escape if you need to and not have a full tank of gas because you may not, you may not have time to wait in line at the gas pump for all the other people that yes. waited last minute. Okay. Um, Pre-packed food, water, first aid, meds, clothes. Pre-pack everything. Yeah. Yeah. Flashlights, tarps, important papers, chargers, charging banks for your phones, um, papers, cash and cards. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and your cords. Gonna tick a few people off. What? Uh oh. Your vehicle. Not what you're putting in it. Your vehicle. Um, a lot of people all oh, are, are getting the um, the economy of good fuel mileage vehicles and stuff. Does your vehicle have a luggage rack? Right. Yeah. Uh, froze there. Does your vehicle have a trailer hitch? Mm -hmm. And uh, because if you if you either one of those, you've got a small trailer to go on there. You can put <laughs> the gas in the trailer. Don't put five gallon gas cans in the vehicle with you. Thank you. And that what what's also neat is they have those um, two and a half, three and a half gallon oblong, uh, you know, rectangular. Uh, uh, gas cans that look almost like a one of the water brick mm -hmm. they strap on top of your car because they sit stable and just run your, your your rope through and stuff on the roof so you don't have to have gasoline in the car mm -hmm. but I, i've seen i mean i've seen so many people and i and some of the, a lot of the, the photos i saw were cars that is like people what are you thinking dr trying to drive that to evacuate with mm -hmm. And it's like my, my son-in-law uh, has a Volkswagen, Volkswagen Jetta. Oh. And it's like, uh, okay, you got a Volkswagen Jetta. You uh, came to a state where there's snow. And <laughs> yes. it's not four-wheel drive. And you can't, and you decided to start, uh, uh, um, making your wife pop out babies until we have you have four of them before you got snippy snipped, <laughs> and you can only carry two of them in the car. <sighs> Anyways, um, yeah, you, people need to think about their vehicle in disaster situations. Now, Tasha, yeah. I want to back here with a couple pictures here, so I'm going to share this. Okay. I, I wanted to mention this one in particular earlier, but. Um, there is some good film you can get. You can get you can you can apply it yourself, but you can get also professional glass companies to do it. Put it on your glass, and like the guy here, he's hitting it with a crowbar mm -hmm. and it's staying intact. Yes. Wow. This is preventative. 
It also keeps people from breaking into your house too. Because <laughs> they're going to hit break and it's not going to, the glass isn't going to go anywhere. So that's uh, one of them. Let's see if I got the other picture here. For your roof. Oh, wet patch, yeah. Wet patch. If you get you get a branch comes through your roof and you pull it out and you got a little hole there, you can you can put a, a cut piece of tarp, put it on there, and wet patch it in place, and it'll keep the water out as mm -hmm. a temporary patch. So things to think about, you know, outside the box, you know, un, not the normal stuff. You know, you know, I I have a, a bucket of this and here and a bucket in uh, California, just in case something goes through the roof yes murphy's law okay so those are the two things that i've been uh, uh, as, as the came up in the conversation the side chat i wanted to throw some pictures up out there of Smart. yeah and here's something regarding cars let's say that you're evacuating you're going to be limited on what you can take i was going by myself in a pickup truck to a girlfriend's house okay i could slide my truck right into her garage because I had all the important papers. I brought a lot of canned food, ended up being there a significant amount of time. What if I had three occupants in that car? Right? So that's yeah. going to make a difference. If you're evacuating and you're having to say it's you, your wife, your son, and you're staying at a hotel, you're not going to leave that stuff in your car. Everyone knows mm -hmm. when entire Florida had to evacuate into Georgia, from that massive hurricane. They all have Florida tags. I've got South Carolina tags. Every thug out there is trolling through Motel 8, the Hilton Gardens, everywhere looking for Florida tags because there's yeah. stuff in their back seat and there's plenty of stuff in their trunk. Because if yeah. you're in a hotel, a shelter, you have to leave it out there, right? Yeah. Is all your valuables are there. If you take it into a hotel, housekeepers come in your room. Yeah. So you're extremely vulnerable. That's the other reason that people do not want to evacuate. Not only the expense and the time to get back, but well, then you also prepare like um, for higher risk areas. Like if you have to use the restroom, you actually have things to put over your windows if you need to. Yes. If you need to change or anything like that on the road mm -hmm. um, on the way through, right? And would somebody also mention having a you know little portable legaloo or something like yes. that? if you need to, um, mm -hmm. you know, and you know, the areas and you know where you'll be going through, uh, traveling through and where it's safe and not safe tip. Yeah. Typically where it'd be safe or not safe to mm -hmm. stop. And like you said, every thug out there is looking for yes. those vehicles that are full of items because they're evacuating. Mm -hmm. So you have to have your head on a swivel whenever you do stop, yes. um, to refill or whatever. And I think most of the ladies in the side know about the go girl or the freshette. I like the freshette. You stand up and you urinate like a man. I am not pulling into a rest area. At first, there are hundreds of people. You're parking down the shoulder of the highway, walking towards that rest area. You can imagine the loveliness of those bathrooms, right? I use that freshette in my truck and then I urinate into a coffee can a yeah. more thing with a lid. So as a woman by herself, leaving her jewelry, okay, because you think my jewelry ain't in my car, it is, okay, along with everything that could steal your identity, cash, I'm not getting out of my car. I'm just not going to do it. And plus, I'm older, gray hair, and no, I'm not going to protect anybody's car. If people are breaking windows in at a rest area, I'm not going to go knock people down or shoot them. I just maybe like, oh, Jesus, don't let them get close to mine. So I don't pull in there. That's only... Yeah evacuation times. If I'm traveling somewhere, I'm going to pull into a rest area and use it, but I don't have my, the valuable, the things I need to live and identify myself, right, to be able to get back in my car. If they steal your suitcase or, you know, whatever's in your car, or your dash cam, who cares? You know, you can buy another one. You don't want to, but you will. Backwards so. Law said, did Mouse say pee like a man, LOL? <laughs> Stand up and pee like a man. I could write my name in the snow if I had enough urine. Yes, because it, <laughs> it lets a woman stand up, not have to pull her pants down. Yeah, it's so sexy. It's not really, but, you know, the and, go girl or freshette. Women know, so it's a female urinary device. <laughs> 
<laughs> um, another thing is uh, for your home prepare preparedness as well as your vehicle preparedness, having those bathing cloths. They're a lot larger. Nursing homes use them and, and assisted living places, but you can get them and they're a lot larger and the soap is a lot more gentle for you than, and they can go for all areas of the body and not be too, too rough on you if you use them. Um, and you need to be making sure you pack in your vehicle, you know, because you don't want to use as much, you won't be able to bathe as much as you probably would like to if, yep. if the power's out. So you need a way to keep yourself clean and healthy during that time. So, and ladies, get a pocket knife that you can slide right onto your pants because, of course, it's hurricane season. You've got a t shirt and shorts on. Do not go into a rest area, do not go into a gas station at those times. Without that little knife, you can slide right up, open it, and cut a sucker if you got to. They will go yep. for an easier mark. Yeah, you I need, you, yeah, you need items for self protection for sure. Mm -hmm. Whether yep. you're staying, because there could still be looters coming through and yes. somebody could break in and maybe that there's not enough emergency personnel because you know, it's a disaster scenario. Mm -hmm. So they can't get to you as quickly or as easily, or mm -hmm. you may not have communication to get a hold of them. That's so, right. um, yeah, definitely self-protection, whatever that may be for your area. Oh my God, Morgan. Sorry. <laughs> oh, Morgan. <laughs> I'll get some, I'll show you. Oh, okay, <laughs> I'm putting a link in the side chat there. I'm not going to put the picture up. Okay. But that's the link to the Go Girl device. And yes. there's those different ones and stuff. So I'm not going to put that picture up. <laughs> you can. It's not. You my, can. Not it ain't going to hurt our feelings any. No, right. I, 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 <laughs> YouTube may take offense at it. They should. It won't intimidate a man. It's a small little thing. But this, is, this is the kind of knife a lady wants with a very long hook to go on to your shorts so yes. that when you've got to open it, if somebody sees this, even though I'm an old lady, they're going to go for somebody who doesn't have one because I'm going to be like, you want some of this? Let's go. Okay. And I'm going to throw this down and then I'm going to pull out my 38 from my bra holster and really shock and awe. This is just going to be laying <laughs> on the ground most likely. Okay. But I'm going to have both if I can get so, so these really help hold it to our pants. Women wear skirts and we need them longer. All right. A uh, quick reminder next week and possibly the week after I will let y'all know on my community page, but at least next week, I will not, we will not have a preppers portal next Wednesday night. I won't have any lives on my channel at all, probably the next two weeks, but I will let you know um, for sure next week. So, because I'm having a major dental procedure and I'm not going to be up to being on. If somebody wants to take my time slot during that time for live streaming, I'd be happy to promote it on my channel so that everybody knows to go check y'all out. And I'll be happy to support from the side um, uh, when I'm up to it. <laughs> so, uh, any other um, hurricane readiness tips or tricks or uh, advice before we sign off? Well, prayers for you because I just went through dental, so I know, and we'll be thinking about you and we'll miss you. Thank you. The, probably the best thing I can say is to, I don't know why we're getting an echo here. I know, all of a sudden. Yeah. Uh, one of the best things I can suggest is make a plan. Sit down and make a base plan for emergency preparedness, and then it will uh, in the federal government called the base plan and then we have tactical response plans or trps for each type of event so you have one you have your base plan which covers your basic stuff food and all your basic supplies you're going to need for right. everything but then you have one like for hurricanes earthquakes wildfires um flooding uh winter snowstorms you have ones that with specific add-ons you're going to need for that and what you're going to do for those spe those specific events so you just create a basic plan and work it out. And remember, have a response plan A, B, C, because, you know, the, the military jargon, no plan uh, survives contact with the enemy. In this case, enemy is Mother Nature. Mm -hmm. So you want to have a backup plan. So if you want to go one where all say, oh, wait a minute, that's flooded out. Where do I go now? You have a plan. Okay, we're going this way. Yeah. Yeah. Like even the little kids, like 
for for Chelsea, my my granddaughter. She knows if something were to happen to me, she knows who, which neighbors are safe to go to for help if she needs to. Um, she knows that, um, you know, I go over basic emergencies with her. That way, if for some reason the phone's out, she can't call, get a hold of somebody, then there is a, a backup, a way she can go across the road to my brother-in-law's house. And she knows both neighbors to both the north and the south are safe as well if she needed help with them. So, all right, y'all. Well, thank y'all so much for watching. I appreciate each of you. God bless. And God and Gil, thank you so much for being our guest panelist tonight. We appreciate you. Sure thing. And Mouse Toes, we're so glad to have you back. It's great to see your ornery smiling face again. <laughs> yes, good to be here. All right. Well, thank y'all so much for watching. God bless. And remember to prep for it, prep for it all. And if you have any more tips or tricks, please leave them in the comments below if you're watching this at a later time. Thanks, guys. Bye.